Thank you. Good morning. You may be seated. Thank you. There is a, a common thing today that uh, really given me so much concern. You see people talking about their situation. And uh, time without number, we preach about this. That situations are not your enemy, but friend. People talk so much about their situation instead of talking about the Redeemer, Jesus Christ. He says, Situation, situation, situation everywhere. Most of the children in my country, Nigeria, they are expecting an election in a few days. You can see many people. Oh. Instead of talking about your Redeemer, you are talking about your challenges, talking about your situation. Tell your neighbor, you talk about the, your situation so much instead of your Redeemer. Hallelujah. Situation is not enemy to Christian. Situation are meant to improve us, not impair us. As a Christian, our struggles Make us what? That's it. It is meant to improve us. Our situation is not like others. Unless you are not a believer. When you see someone who say, I have headache. And you too have headache. You are a Christian and that person is not. Your headache is not like he is headache. Your headache is meant to improve you, to strengthen your desire and your determination. For who? You say, ah, this problem of this country is too much. What has happened? No. Your problem is not like others. They are not meant to kill you, to destroy you, but to strengthen your desire, to strengthen your character. Okay, let's quickly look at John 16, just the last verse there. The last verse, John 16, is uh, in that 33. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have what? You know the meaning of tribulation. But take heart. I have what? When you look at the book of Luke 22, verse 32, I pray, Simon, your faith may not fail. That is to tell you that there will always be an issue that will challenge our faith. A true Christian, a true believer is tested. That book of John 16 shows that we are not in heaven. Something must punch us and test our faith. Something could be hardship, could be sickness, could be setback, could be nightmares. Just name it. Something must what? Punch Talk, test your faith. We are not in, in heaven. We are in the world, but we are not part of them. Why are you so concerned about your situation? Instead of your redeemer, 
your healer, your savior. There will always be an issue that will challenge your faith. This is the beauty in our journey to internal life. Beauty in our journey with Christ Jesus. Beauty. What you see as foolish is beauty. Make our journey valuable. If not the situation I have gone through in the past, do you think I will be in the position I am today? Listen, this is the word beauty in our world, in our journey to internal life. Beauty in our journey with Christ Jesus. That achieve that trouble, that name calling, that foolish thing, that mess, that sickness as, as, as a Christian. Don't forget, Jesus does not maintain what he does not form. That is why you have to carry him along. Carry him along in your marriage, carry him along in your business. He does not maintain what he does not form. Does he form your marriage? Does it form your business? And you are asking him to maintain it. You are calling him to maintain, to maintain your life, to maintain your money, to maintain your... Does he actually form me? We misjudge ourselves when we are in circumstances and situations such as failure. Ah, why me? I'm a Christian. Why all this failure? Why all this trouble? Is that a result of my going to church? Is that a result of stopping smoking? Is that a result of stopping going to parties? Is that a result of stopping going to nightclubs? Why? Why me? You begin to look at Jesus in a bad light. A man can be poor and yet be a friend of Jesus. A man can be sick in body and yet be a candidate of heaven. We cannot separate warfare from salvation. Tell your neighbor. Again? Hmm, say salvation, uh, warfare. Hmm, you cannot. True salvation will put us into direct conflict with Satan. True salvation. Yeah, all this salvation you are talking about, they are fake. You say you are saved. What do you mean by you are saved? You are not saved. That is why you are like this. You are what you are. You are not saved yet. Salvation is not on the street. You say you are saved. Who told you? You are still a religious person. You talk more of your situation instead of redeemer. True salvation will put you into direct conflict with Satan. What do I mean? A true Christian is tested by his ability to face circumstances and situation. Tell your neighbor. 
A true Christian is tested by his ability to face, to face circumstances and situations. Little circumstances, you run to a witch doctor. That's because of challenges from one church to another. Open your calendar and number the churches you have attended in searching for Jesus Christ. And yet, you are still looking for Jesus. Can you name how many times you have been baptized? And yet, you are searching for the Holy Ghost. And just one baptism leads to Holy Ghost. True Christian, true believer, true you, let me put it that way, true you is tested by his ability to face circumstances and what? And situation. Talk of trial, temptation. It is impossible to worship God without challenges. So where are we going? Because this is season of challenges. You talk more of your challenges than your redeemer. This is why I'm here today to tell you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus does not maintain what he does not form. So I'm just here to remind you what you know already. So, your business is not going well. That is why you are here today. You are wasting your time. You should be here for salvation of your soul. Because it is that salvation that can help you to maintain your miracle. Think about maintenance. And what is maintenance? Since morning you have been here, you have been observing all what has been going on. Look at the church. You see? What do you see there? Empty seats. Look at there. Empty seat. But million people want to enter here. It is not the number of people that enter here that matter, but the soul that has been saved. <laughs> yes, millions want to enter. I learned this from apostles of the old. How many of them have a church, what we call church. They evangelize all over. We are looking for crowds today, but what of the soul? How many of us are prepared to come here today? Even the people inside the church, half of us are not even prepared to come here. Maybe after sitting down, after a while, they begin to think of, well, I thought uh, I can get a woman here today. I thought I can get an MD here today. I thought I can get some connection here. Mm, I don't know where. There are many messengers of Satan here. They capture them. It's not, but you have to be very, very careful. For those who are here for salvation of, of soul, we are not here because of your money. Your offering. If we are here because of offering, that place will not empty. And almost thousand people. We are not here because of offering. We are here because of the soul. <laughs> I was in Revelation of recent, and the Lord showed me. Look, Joshua. See what you are doing. And I look at it and say, be careful. I say, yes, sir. Be careful. Hmm. What, I, what should I be careful for? 
Remember, membership are not this, your strength. Look for the souls and save the soul. Don't have the church because of money, putting the crowd together because of money. I say, yes, sir. So the grace we are asking for now, this is one of the reasons why you have not been seeing me coming out. From that entrance, by the time you enter from there, they can ask you to go. Not people, but the Spirit of God will send you back. That is the standard of church. <laughs> Read your Bible. You enter the apostolic ministry in the New Testament, the Old Testament. By the time you enter, there you will be screened by the Spirit of God. There, yeah, go, come, go, come, go, come. If your salvation is not yet now, from the gate, instead of people screening you, this is what I'm asking grace for now. Not open the gate for everyone to enter, but from the gate, you'll find yourself being delivered. From there, back home, you just say, no, 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 I'm going, I'm going. Why are you not entering? What happened? I'm going, okay. So that's it. Remember, this is apostolic ministry. And uh, what is apostolic ministry? The foundation of the church is the Holy Ghost. And if it is Holy Ghost, it is heart that you worship, not your body. But today, body are worship in the church, no longer art of people. Faith is of man's heart, not of man's body. But it's our body now that is worship. See me, I'm standing here. Can you see me? Can you, what, what can you see? Appearance. Camouflage, you are looking. But the real person is inside. You can only see with your heart. But can you say anything apart from this camouflage? So this is the kind of person we are today. This is why you'll be looking at the man that is talking. Is it, is it of God? When a seed is planted, we say, this seed that is planted, we don't know what it is, but it, the same seed has germinated, and we don't know what it is. And the same tree, as bear fruit. But the same fruit is what we are eating now. You see three apostles, you are eating their fruit. But the tree is as germinated and bear fruit now. The same fruit, they are the one walking since morning you are seeing. Yet, you don't know the, the seed. 